Welcome back to the vlog here today, everybody. Um, we're doing something a little bit different today. We're not doing anything hunting related. We're actually gonna give you guys an in-depth look of how we produce and edit the Breaking Point and Breaking Spring TV series. Um, we've had quite a few people over the years hit us up asking to do a vlog on how we do our editing, tips and tricks, things like that. Uh, some of the stuff that we use. So I'm gonna dig in today on how I do things, how I edit a whole episode. There's really no right or wrong way to do it, but we're gonna dive into it today, show you how I get it done, and sometimes how it varies from episode to episode. So, hope you guys enjoy the vlog, let's do it. Now the key to a good episode edit is your workspace. Um, I like to switch it up here from time to time, and this is my office workspace, got the desktop here. And I do actually a lot of my bigger edits on here, but I've been working a lot here the last few weeks on the desktop. So I am going to edit in comfort today from the couch. All right, so before I get into the actual episode itself, I wanted to kind of give you guys a rundown on how we do a little bit of the organizing for our content. The biggest time saver that you can do is to organize your stuff the best way as possible. Uh, what we are going to be working on today is the Breaking Spring episode. And as you can see, we got all of our episodes for this spring, eight in total. And if you dive into one, the one I'm working on, we got it broken down um, by seasons. And then we got some other B-roll that is involved with this episode. But if we dive into, say, a first season folder, <clears throat> we have all the video content organized in this segment by camera. Now we will do it different on other shows depending on um, how the hunts lay out. But this one in particular is by camera. If we go into a different one here, I think some of them are by date, like this. If we go into a first season for the East Siders. Um, Episodes are broken down by date. Just matters how the footage is given to us. Um, these guys have it where there's morning, afternoon hunts. Uh, you can break it. I prefer when it's broken down by camera per day. Uh, it just goes into a timeline a lot better and it's a lot easier to see and utilize in the timeline. So without further delay, we're gonna actually dig into the episode. Now I actually did a lot of um, pre-organizing on this and I've actually been working a couple hours on this already so kind of kind of delayed as far as getting into um, how I was going to edit it here apologize but what I got going on here is I made a quick little intro this might change um, not sure if I'm going to go with it or not because this is going to be just an episode intro breakdown and then goes right into our content here so I'm gonna go into my transitions folder. Um, I got, as you can see, I got quite a few different transitions in here. And a lot of these have been in, I've got them in various places throughout the years. Um, I've had quite a few people ask me where I get my plugins from and whatnot. And I really don't have an easy answer because over the past seven, eight years, um, they just keep compiling. Um, I really don't toss a lot of them away because I figure at some point I'm probably gonna use them for something. I'll just show you a few of them here that I use quite often. Um, Quake transitions, zoom transitions, uh, your basic dissolves, quick blurs are a lot of the, a lot of the big transitions that I use a lot. Uh, I'm going to effects here, and some of these are new, uh, but this is Emla, which I use for color correcting. And then we got a lot of the pre the Final Cut presets that we have for audio corrections, um, which if your audio is good, you should not have to use them as much. But one that I use quite a bit um, for crackly audio or audio that has a lot of noise is Crunkle Pop, which is, um, I think it's like, it's a purchase plugin. It's like 50 bucks or more, but it does save some of your, some of your footage with getting better better audio at times when it does sound like crap. Go up into the text generators and that stuff. And titles, we got uh, 
ton of different titles that I've collected throughout the years. Um, it really depends on the day what I want to use it for. We got stuff from wedding titles to glitch titles and the list can go on and on and on. I have a pile of different ones. If we go to our generators tab, um, this has just a lot of different background stuff, glitch, glitch plugins with logos, all sorts of stuff like that, split screens, uh, you name it. The, I, there is a ton here. Still frame, um, stuff you can use for like photos and memories, all sorts of stuff. Um, a lot of that we obviously won't use for editing the show, but just kind of wanted to show you that over the years we have collected a pretty, or I have collected a pretty big catalog of plugins that I will use from time to time depending on what project I'm on. I'm going to dig into the actual episode here now. Now, I did a little bit of the pre edit on this, so I apologize, but um, what I am doing here is I'm going to break down the basic beginning of the show. I have the show intro, like I showed you here. Uh, and then we are going to, once I have that laid out, we go right into our first scene. And in this scene, we are setting up shotguns, or sighting in the shotguns for spring. And then it's gonna prelude, prelude probably into a hunt. Um, I haven't really broke down a ton of this footage yet. I produced a lot of this uh, along with Dylan and Aaron, I was along with a lot of the hunts, so I already have a pretty good idea in my head of how I want to put it together. Some of our edits that I am not familiar with the footage, it might take me sitting down prior to, ed prior to editing for an hour or two hours, uh, laying footage in a timeline in order and cutting out, figuring out what clips I want to use or what I don't want to use, uh, and just trying to build the story if you don't have a story to go off of. So, in this segment, like I said, we're shooting shotguns. I have a uh, just an opening interview, titles, laying a couple clips over the top. I did a couple speed bursts um, to speed up, slow down stuff, things like that. Um, I have one section here. So we are gonna go to this, for example, right here where I am sighting in the gun and we have a cool shot of just slowing it down, getting the gun going off. We got gunfire and slow-mo. So that in this particular shot, I slowed the clip down to 25%. If you go up into your tab here, you can adjust your speeds. Um, I like to use custom a lot because uh, I, I just never know what kind of speed I wanna slow it down to, but they have preset tabs for speeding up, slowing down, if you wanna do stuff like that. And I got a slow-mo clip, <clears throat> or a clip that we're going to slow down. Uh, it was filmed at 120 frames. And I'm gonna show you kind of how I'm doing this one. Uh, every one of them's a little bit different, but so, I already did this obviously, but this clip and this clip were attached. I detached this one clip, kept it normal speed, and as far as slowing the clip down, it kind of varies. Uh, sometimes I'll do half speed, 25% speed, um, usually never do 10% speed, but other times I might use the custom button um, to get the speed I want. So once I slowed this clip down, our normal speed clip is gonna be out of the timeline or out of, out of timed from the slow down clip. So we actually, I actually adjusted this to get it to match time wise when the gun goes off. Cause I wanna have it sound, I wanna have the audio of the gunshot sound natural and not have it where it's the slowed down, really delayed audio sound. So I'll play that through for you here and you can kind of see at full speed what it looks like. And here we go. Pretty close, but it's just might be. And with a lot of the audio, uh, as you can see, I'm layering audio underneath. I don't like to leave open spots to where there is um, any voids in audio. It just sounds weird to the when you're when you're watching it it just sounds weird if there is periods of no audio 
Um, there should just always be, even if it's just background noise or some sort of ambient sound, there should be something um, over that video when you're editing. My style, I would say, has definitely changed over the past few years. Um, used to do a lot of overlaying edits, like, like this one here, where I'm overlaying this shot from looking at the target back to the gun, did a slight opacity fade on it, and then brought it back, sped it up into the next clip. Over time, I've decided I wanted to get back to just more regular hard cuts and just trying to find that balance of creativity, but then also having some sort of natural hard cuts in your video. Gives it, just gives it a good mix. And we are finishing this scene up. We, I finished shooting sight, shotguns in, kind of wrap my thing up, and then we got Dylan going into um, his, his round of sighting his shotgun in. What I did here going into this next scene was I went into the shotgun folder where I have all the video from us shooting and I just basically took the fav my favorite cuts out of each thing of Dylan shooting and just threw it in the timeline. Um, I like to just pick a scene out that I'm going into, maybe throw my favorite 20, 30 cuts in and then whatever sort of talking audio I'm gonna be utilizing that'll get thrown in the mix as well. And then I just start piecing it up, throwing it on top of uh, the subject, whoever's talking, um, or just having it straight on top in the timeline with natural audio. How this one is laying out is we are going to um, finish Dylan wrapping up and then we're gonna be going right into hunts. So I'm gonna dig into this right now and hang on to your britches. Okay, so we got to this clip here and we are just doing a little bit of a montage of a bunch of shooting clips of Dylan. Let's play it here for you for a sec. Down. Just on the site. He's gonna be taking a couple quick shots here. Bang, bang. Checking the target. So going into this shot, if you play that through, I don't know, to me, <clears throat> this is a handheld pan going into a stationary cut of Dylan shooting. And when you look at this, your natural eye wants to stay on Dylan. But when we get to the next shot, just how the motion comes through, you're following over to the different other side of the screen, to the right side of the screen. And the subject, Dylan, is on the left side of the screen going into the next shot. So what we're going to try doing here to blend it in a lot more and make it look nat more natural to the, to the eye or easier for the eye to view, we're actually going to do a reverse on this clip. So we're going to go up here, highlight our clip, hit reverse clip, and now it's going to take that pan back the other way. And when it goes to the next shot of Dylan, the last frame, the last frame from this shot and this shot match up and your eyes already looking at the subject in the next clip. So just a little bit of tip to make your transitions from one shot to another if you're doing hard cuts um, a little bit smoother and easier for the viewer to watch. It's just to keep that in mind when you're using particular clips to frame them so they're hitting certain sides of the screens at the same times. So your eyes, so the viewer's eyes aren't bouncing all over from this, from one side of the screen to another. Um, if you do a lot of that, just it naturally for a viewer, it's hard to watch after a while because you're just, you're all over the place and you're not sure where you're gonna go. I have a little bit of a helper in the office today too to make sure that I'm doing the right job, right? She's Black Stamp Media. Um, dog of the month and she's got to go to the potty now so I gotta we gotta do a break potty break so we just wrapped up you comfy so we just wrapped up here Dylan's and my shooting scene uh, we're gonna be going into 
my dad's hunt first uh, first season, and then we will be going into my second season kill, Aaron's second season kill, and Dylan's. So this is gonna be a pretty lengthy episode. Uh, we're already two and a half minutes in. I've been working on this for probably three, two, three hours or so. Just to give you an idea of um, kind of the workflow. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go through my dad's footage from first season. Gonna go up top here, select first season. And then I'm basically just gonna be going through the hunts that we had and just dragging clips in the timeline for now. I'm gonna probably have a pretty long timeline out here um, up to his kill. And then we will actually just start breaking that down from there. I like to edit my stuff and segments so what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump a bunch of my dad's turkey kill footage and some of the pre-looting hunts before that kill into the timeline and then that'll be the next chunk i work on when i complete that then i go on to the next scene and so on and so forth we are back in the office today day two of editing here on the episode we were working on uh, the previous day we are going to dive into the first kill scene of this hunt. Um, this is my dad's first bird on this episode. And I'm just gonna break it down with you how I am gonna edit this kill scene. Um, kill scenes kind of can vary depending on the situation, depending on the quality of the kill, everything, how it was filmed, audio, whatnot. Uh, this one was pretty standard bird comes in strutting just absolutely perfect um, There's a little bit of shake on the shot. So we're gonna see uh, You're gonna see when we get close to that uh, Probably gonna have to do something a little bit creative for adjusting To compensate for that little bit of bump on the shot before we get into this uh, kill scene I'm gonna just go back and Fix any of the transitions. I haven't done anything to yet uh, it's just kind of how my workflow goes. I'll work ahead, do all my cuts, do all my audio, come back, and then do a lot of my transition cuts, effects, things like that. Um, so I just kind of do the main edit first, go through, do a secondary edit, and then I start again and do a next, the next block of footage. So we're gonna do a couple establishing shots, just showing the scene, showing we're hunting in a blind, giving an overview of the actual setup. And then we're gonna go into the pre-hunt interview. Do a quick cut here to the pan of the scene. So the audio here is super low. This is actually shotgun audio from the hunt. Don't know why we use that. My fault. But we are going to have to try and bump this audio up the best we can without getting it so it's too noisy. Um, we do have pretty loud music right now. So we're gonna go to the effects, go down to audio uh, levels. A lot of times I use compressor. Compressor, compressor will usually help bump that audio up quite a bit. Let's see how it does here. Still pretty low. Um, we're gonna try this here. Copy the clip, double the audio. Since it's not the greatest audio quality, we're gonna make it a very short um, sequence or interview sequence. Okay, so we are at the final kill scene here. Um, I've just gone back through and went over um, some of these cuts here, any of the hard cuts I did find, just uh, finding focus transitions where it's from bird to bird. Um, I don't have a shot of any other B-roll type of stuff. Um, so we are gonna go here, I went here and actually just stabilize this last clip. It's pretty shaky. Uh, I know I'm probably gonna have to do some adjusting on it or splicing in some certain spots. 
um, when we actually get to the kill itself. We're just gonna fix our audio here and then our next move is gonna be bringing in that post kill music. Okay, so we found our song we're gonna use. And I usually just like to, uh, when I catalog all my music, I will come in here and I will mark t a tag on each song. So when I use it, I know I used it before, what I used it for, um, so I don't go back and, and double it up. So we're gonna drag this one in the timeline here and we're gonna add it to where the beat hits. That's pretty much it. We actually had to take the blade, um, and there's a little trick. Uh, if you got a clip that, like on this instance, the Aaron shakes on the shot, uh, stabilization doesn't really work very well with that. So what I actually had to do, it, it everything that's stabilized under, underneath here turned out very nice um, in this section, but it just shook too much in that. It actually looked a little bit better if we did not use it here. So I just bladed it and I bladed it underneath this clip so you can't see when that crop out comes when you go back to just the native footage. All right. So we just finished the final hunt here. Just threw in the black stamp media logo. That's always the final one of the final touches. Got the credits to finish up. That's just really layering text on top of everything. And we got color correcting to do, which I don't want to bore you with that. That usually takes about uh, for this the show has ended up being 23 minutes, so that'll probably take an hour to two hours to completely do. But that's basically the gist of how we produce and edit our shows. Hope you guys enjoyed the vlog today. If you got any questions on how we edit anything further, more in depth, you want want some answers on, hit us in the uh, comments below. Try to answer them the best we can. And as always, thank you for watching the channel. Hope you're digging the videos. We can't wait to put more out down the road. And give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next vlog.